With an eye on the old yet proven strategy of mass-producing cost-effective and capable combat vehicles, the T-55 quickly became the Soviet Union's take of choice, and it became the most produced main battle tank in existence. It remains one of the most prolific vehicles across the globe. The early T-55 variants were not groundbreaking in regard to their technological advantages, and it was the simplicity in its design and its reliableness that brought that led to its success. It didn't have to be the best, it simply had to work. In Gunner Heat PC, the T-55 is fielded as the T-55A variant with the National People's Army of the East German Forces, and it's easy to gloss over the T-55A when the T-72M and the T-72M1 are in-game and immediately accessible, i.e. there's no grinding in this game. And the more modern and better equipped tanks seemingly dwarf the capabilities of the T-55A. However, less capable never means unusable, and many players may miss out on a fun and unique experience. And by learning the intricacies of the gutter sight, the tried and true T-55A can be a lot of fun for new and experienced gutter heat PC players alike. Gunner Heat PC gives us the opportunity to experience multiple fire control systems and various gunner sight designs, and honestly, each of these have their own nuanced methods of making each vehicle a unique and challenging experience all in their own rights, and today we're going to break down the T-55A's gunner sight so that you can better employ it on the battlefield. If you are new here, my name is Wolf of Tangent, and on this channel I feature gaming-related content as well as general content surrounding military combat vehicles and milsim-style shooters. If this interests you at all, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and be sure to enable the notifications bell so you don't miss any uploads. The T-55A is equipped with a variant of the D-10T 100mm rifle cannon, and the main gun is stabilized on two planes, with a full combat load of 43 rounds available, and of those 43 rounds, the T-55A really has a very diverse portfolio of munitions available. It can fire a high-explosive round, an armor-piercing high-explosive, a high-explosive anti-tank, and an armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabo ammunition, really offering a lot of flexibility on the battlefield. The main gun is paired with the PKT, which is a 7.62 by 54R caliber machine gun, as a coaxially mounted secondary armament. Additionally, a 12.7mm Dishka heavy machine gun is mounted on the turret's roof, offering the crew an effective anti-air measure. However, as of time of recording, the heavy machine gun is not available for use. The gunner sight is simplistic yet effective, and the sight offers two magnification settings at 3.5 times and a 7x zoom. In low light, the sights can be illuminated by pressing the I key. In the lower left of the sight is a Stadia rangefinder, and it is calibrated for a target height of 2.7 meters and is ranged in hundreds of meters. To use a Stadia sight, align the bottom horizontal line where the target's tracks meet the ground. Then manipulate the incrementally decreasing scale until the corresponding marks align with the top of the target. It's important to note that this isn't an exact science and the gunner may be required to make minor tweaks on the fly to kind of hone in that exact zero. And honestly, this really only works with a stationary target and or a target that stays at the same range. Now that the ranging data is approximated, the gunner can then move on to setting the range data for his intended munition type. Now, the data displayed within the site is in Cyrillic, and moving from left to right, we have the 30F412 high explosive, then we have the BR412D armor piercing high explosive, then we have the 3BK5M high explosive anti tank fin stabilized, then the coaxial PKT 7.62 by 54R machine gun. And then finally, we have the 3BM20 armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabo. You can select and load your desired munition type by using the 1 through 4 keys and access the coaxial PKT machine gun by selecting the right bracket key. Just note that the munition selections from 1 through 4 do not match the format of the site. And uh, when you select number 1, that's going to be your high-explosive anti-tank fin-stabilized. Number 2 is going to be your armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabo. Number 3 is going to be your high-explosive and number four is going to be your armor-piercing high-explosive. It is important to check which munition you currently have loaded, as your initial ranging estimate must be set manually for each specific round. You can do this easily by looking in your lower left corner, and if the top munition type is in white, that is what is currently loaded. If it's in red, it's either currently in the reload process, or the select munition type is empty and requires a resupply by pressing the Q key. Now, if resupply is indeed required, a prompt mid-screen will alert you to this. Now that the gunner has the approximated range and verified the loaded munition type, he can now adjust the range based on the appropriate scale. In this example, we use the 3BK5M high explosive anti tank fence stabilized round, and honestly, this is simply for the fact that it requires a higher arc due to its lower velocity. It will be easier to see in the demonstration. 
the range can be adjusted by one of two methods. One method is by using the page up and the page down keys to adjust the horizontal index to the intended range's value. Alternatively, holding down the left control key and using the mouse scroll wheel can achieve the same results, and this is honestly the route that I choose to go with. With the range set, the subsequent adjustments may be necessary to fine-tune the desired point of aim versus the point of impact. This is due to the gunner's sight being slightly offset to the main gun due to the gunner's positioning. If engaging a target and a munition swap is required, the ranging data from the previous round will then be applied to the new munition type's range scale. Whether this is a function of the sight solely in-game or if this was indeed how it operated in real life, I personally do not know. If you do, please let me know in the comments section below because honestly, I'm, I'm very curious. The T-55A is equipped with a separate night sight and it was a first generation image intensifier type night vision device that utilized a phosphorus film, giving it the distinctive green image. To access the night sight, use the left shift key to access the gunner sight, then press the T key. While in the night sight, the gunner does not have access to any ranging data and is at a fixed 5.5 times zoom magnification, and the field of view is quite restrictive. Additionally, enemy and friendly infrared beams, headlights, or muzzle flashes can degrade the image quality or even completely wash out the image. The gunner can toggle the lens to infrared spotlight by using the end key. However, it's important to note the infrared beam is easily diffused and reflected by particles in the air such as smoke and dust. This can quickly become a detriment and can oftentimes be remedied by simply turning off your spotlight and using your friendly spotlights as they engage the same target. Engaging targets inside of 800 meters is really ideal when it comes to the night sight. And aside from the machine gun, all of the munitions available have similar performance in regard to ballistics within this range parameter. Just remember, when you're utilizing the night sight in any aspect, precision really is never the goal here. Getting around on target first is what matters. The night sight is definitely a thrilling experience in a high tempo, close quarters fight, but it can be challenging, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that. Sometimes I do struggle with it. But if you take the time to learn it, the night sight is actually a lot of fun to play. Though this isn't necessarily a gunnery specific topic, the commander's view offers some advantages in close in target acquisition, especially when discussing night combat. While using the commander's view, the infrared spotlight is visible and the field of view is greater than that of the gunner's night sight. A player can utilize this and get the gun roughly laid on target by using the turret controls to bracket the target, so to speak. Then, by switching to the gunner's night sight, make corrective adjustments before engaging the target. Alternatively, if the target is considerably close in and immediate action is required, firing from the commander's view is a viable option. If you've liked this video, please consider leaving the video a like and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to enable the notifications icon so you don't miss any future uploads. If you would like to support the channel, merch is available via a link in the video's description as well as affiliate links for Amazon. If you would like a more direct way of supporting the channel, please consider leaving a super thanks. That'll be it for today. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching.